And up next uh, to talk about uh, safety is Melissa Pazin, right? Did I get that right? Yes. Okay, awesome. <laughs> What a treat to be with you all. What a privilege to be with you all. I have a funny story. Just about to the day, 10 years ago, I had to have a talk with my children. My son, Christopher, my firstborn, at that time was 20. My daughter, Kate, at that time, KT, was 17. I had been single since KT was five months old. And at the wonderful age of 17, the poor child was about to get a stepfather. So you say, how did you meet this man? Well, let me tell you. At that time, I believe I was Melissa Payson 2.0. Having been trained as a psychiatric social worker, I was working in the field of technology. Makes perfect sense. I could do grief counseling when the computer wouldn't work. <laughs> and over the Memorial Day weekend, I and a number of my colleagues had been installing new software at our place of employment. And on Sunday afternoon, I needed to launch my computer, go to the internet, and download some technical support data that we didn't have and we clearly needed. Up popped the most common browser at that time, Yahoo. Prominent on Yahoo's site that day was their new deal, Yahoo Dating. Now the guy I had been seeing for about seven years was turning out to not be the love of my life. And I thought, hmm, I'll have to come back to that. <laughs> Between Memorial Day and the 4th of July, I met more losers than you can shake a stick at. <laughs> and I look like this. They come in all shapes and sizes, boys and girls. They can be gorgeous. They can look ridiculous. You just don't know from how they look. And then one morning I thought, well, you know, this isn't working for me. I'm going to take down my profile. I'm done with it. So I went online, got to the Yahoo's match site, And it said I had mail. And the mail was from a man who told me about his pug dog with whom he was having conversations because his wife of 31 years had died the year before. He told me about his love for Zydeco music and New Orleans. He poured out his heart in two pages. And I was, I mean, he had me at that point. So I wrote back. And he wrote back. And I gave him my number. Because I knew it was okay. I don't know how I knew, but I knew it was okay. Okay, so we talked on the phone that day. We talked on the phone three days later. We had our first date three days after that. Six weeks after that, 
because I'm so careful in my planning. We were engaged. <laughs> and then I had to have this talk. And Christopher, God love him, said, Mom, you know, if I did this to you, I said, yes, dear, if you were to tell me after six weeks that you were getting married, we would have to have some significant talk. To which she replied, but you know, at your age, you m brat. I guess you got to get on with it, he said. Katie just sat there with her eyes big, thinking, holy fill in the blank. My mother is getting married again. My father is getting divorced again. I am starting college in a year. I have to take the SAT. My best friend is going to a different school from the one that I will attend. I know it. From there, Kate and I had another conversation and then brought Chris in. If you think it was hard for me to say I'm getting married to a man I've only known for six weeks, let me tell you, I needed to reassure my children that their safety was my number one priority. I had a stepmother. My father had given us this line about how we would always be number one. Didn't always work out that way. But for my children, ladies and gentlemen, my number one job was to make sure that they made it to adulthood without becoming ax murderers, finishing enough school, and being useful members of society. That was my job. And so starting with Katie and then with Kate and Chris, I explained something. I believe Stephen Joseph Hitchens is a man of honor. I believe he is a man of honesty. I believe he is a man with incredible values. And let me tell you one thing. If you are ever in a room with Steve and I am not there and you don't feel comfortable, you leave the room and you come to me. If for any reason you think that Steve might touch you inappropriately, might do anything to harm you, if you believe, if you feel at all that Steve might not be looking out for your best interests, leave the room, come to me. I don't know if it's too many Lifetime movies, ladies. I don't. But I can tell you, time and time again, we read stories that are true and they are factual about step-parents who molest their step-children. Now, I can't tell you also, it doesn't need to be a step, but I, perhaps because of the Lifetime movies, had a sense that my kids needed to know that I would never say, this man in my life wouldn't do anything inappropriate, my children must be lying. I hadn't raised them that way. They were honest. They were bold-faced honest. At your age, thank you, dear. Have the talk. Parents. Whether it be in a digital world, whether it be when they learn to cross a street, have the talk. Jerry Sandusky, 
yuck. Have the talk. Who knows the percentage of people who are molested by someone they knew? Who knows? 86 to 92 percent know the molester, which means 8 to 14 percent are strangers. Have the talk. Thank you.